Come on, you. Do you like it? Yeah, I love it. Oh my god, is that your CV? Yes. You like trousers, don't you? So that's the entrance to Radio One. There's a good boy. It's getting more and more traction. Oh, that is massive. Hi, Max Fosh. I'm Alid Hayden Jones, head of Radio One. Throughout my life, I've always liked the idea that you can very much make your own luck. Well done, Max. You're moving to glory. For example, I got lucky on YouTube. It all started after I randomly DM'd some creators I liked, and then three months down the line, we made a video together which was seen by millions around the world. 77 million people have reached out. Now, life in 2020 has been... Transmission. Um, Good evening. Well... Crisis. Really tough. Especially if you work in the creative industries. It seems like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But I want to prove that there is. Creators like Airac have shown that it's still possible to grow and make a name for yourself in 2020. His mantra is high risk, high reward, and it's work. This was the biggest risk I ever took on a video. He's managed to grow from zero to 800,000 subscribers in 11 months. That's mad. Now, outside of YouTube, I've always had two goals. Perform a sellout stand-up show at the Shepherd's Bush Empire in London and work for BBC Radio 1. I've been working on the comedy for a while and begin your lot, getting better and honing a show, but I've never thought of how I can make myself stand out to the big bosses at Radio 1. But then I had a thought. A thought about socks. Would you like to sort out all of my clean socks? I don't want to, but I will help you. Yeah, thanks. Initially, my plan was very simple. I would take my CV, print it on the biggest sticker possible and put it onto the roof of my 999cc 2016 bright red Volkswagen Up called Vinny. I would then park the car outside the studio of Radio 1 for 24 hours and see what would happen. But before I ordered the stickers, I needed to scout out the best location to put the car. So I'm just heading to Oxford Circus where BBC Radio 1 have all their studios. Um, basically to find a place where I can park the car. Oh, there's a good boy. And the main problem I have is that Radio 1 is, is on Oxford Street, basically a massive main road, so there's no way that I can park on the main road. So I need to find the closest place that has pay and display parking. There she is. So obviously there's no way that I can park anywhere here or here or here, but maybe in there? After a bit of nosing around, I found the entrance to the studio. So that's the entrance to Radio 1, right? And uh, what I found outside was a single yellow line. Now, if I may, can I briefly dive into the world of London parking law? You're legally allowed to park on a single yellow line at night. So my plan was to park the car overnight right outside the studio and then the next morning, 7.30, get up and sit by the car all day to make sure that I wasn't in anyone's way and I could move the car if a traffic warden turned up. And with that plan ready, I was late for a sticker appointment. I like their name. What do we sell? I don't know, signs, etc. Nice and snug. Hello, mate. You alright? You alright, you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Oh, no, it's big. <laughs> My god, that is massive. <laughs> Hopefully, it's gonna fit. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. I didn't think the CV alone would be enough. So in addition, I had one more thing to add to the car. Something that would make it really tricky for the BBC to say no. Right, are we done? We're done. So you're probably thinking, what's the deal with the QR code? The reason I put the QR code on the car is basically to stand out. I don't want to do this stunt, rock up, they see the CV, they're like, oh, that's a CV, great. We'll file that. I want to make it so it's the easiest thing in the world for them to say yes. So the QR code will take them here. Hi Radio 1, my name's Max Fosh. You see, today I've hired a studio to pitch you a piece of content. Boom, second angle. No messing around. I saw that you recently did away with one of my favourite segments of the show, Innuendo Bingo. So today I'd like to pitch to you a segment called Task Life. Each week I'll sit down with someone who wants to plug their, I don't know, 1920s black and white rom-com based on the outskirts of Stevenage and we'll complete the life task that I hadn't quite got round to doing. Sorting all of my clean socks, untangling my headphones and counting my spare change, which is not counted. Actually, let me give you a brief taster. This is Dan. He's my housemate, but he's also an actor, and today he'll be playing the role of an actor. Hello. Hi, Max. How you doing? I'm well, mate. I'm a yeah. yeah. You've, just, you've just been in a film, haven't you? Yeah, big one. 
Jennifer Aniston was in it. She was. Yeah. Mike Myers. Mike Myers, yep, Mike Myers was in it, yeah. Only briefly. Briefly. He's, yeah, he's sort of tapered off since Shrek, so. Good to see him get Can't to get in again. with the big guys anymore. No. <laughs> Not like you. Yeah. Big boy. Yeah. Um, Dan, would you like to sort out all of my clean socks? I don't want to, but I will help you. Yeah, thanks. Do you like the, the half ball or the full ball? That's full ball, baby. That's full ball. You like trousers, don't you? When you finish filming on a big show, a big film that you've done, you yeah. Know, is there a rap party? Yeah. Yeah. You talk about Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Yeah. Rap parties. She's going for it. Is she? Yeah. She's drinking fizzy pop. Should have thought that's through because this bit isn't com Nine. particularly conducive for conversation. No, it's not. I've never seen anyone eat so many twiglets in one night. Twenty-two pounds and sixteen pence. One euro, three dimes, and a Chinese yuan. It's just going to be tug on one end, tug on the other. When you're doing press junkets, right, if you're doing the, going through the ringer, yeah. you normally get a lot of the same stuff, don't you? A lot of the same questions. Yeah. Is this a little bit different? Uh, yeah. Have you done this, ever done this before in a press Never junket? Never balled socks with Max Fosh. See, it's original. Thanks for sorting my sock actor, Dan. Three. Yeah. Done. Dan, thank you very much. My pleasure. Would you, like to, um, would you like to tell the lovely people where they can find your acting work? Yeah, sure. Um, I've not had a job this year. It's been really hard. <laughs> your, your Instagram? What's that? Um, don't bother. <laughs> because I've not had a job this year. <laughs> Just pictures of my living room, man. All I'm after, Radio 1, is to present some of your online content. And look, I've got the credentials. How much kale is too much kale? Never. And I won't be offended if you don't want to pick up Task Life. But send me to Big Weekend. Send me to Glastonbury. Send me out on the street and I promise you some great content. Either way, drop me an email. Let's chat. So, the car was done and looking red and the pitch was up on YouTube as an unlisted video which means that you could only watch it if you'd scanned the QR code. And just before I left for Radio 1 I wanted to show Dan my handiwork. Got a present for you downstairs. Yay. Oh my god is that your CV? <laughs> Miscellaneous. I ran the Great North Run. <laughs> Hire me because I can do this. <laughs> then if they scan that QR code. Opening browser. Takes me to YouTube. <laughs> it's a good start. I've hired a studio to pitch you a piece of content. That's amazing. I've never used a QR except when I get coffee now. <laughs> With Dan happy, I headed off on the journey to drop the car at Radio 1. So, I'm currently parked outside of Radio 1. I'm, it's currently 5.30. So I'm basically just going to sit here until 6.30 until I can legally park on a single yellow line. I'm not sure if you've ever sat in a car and contemplated what you're about to do. But all I could think about was this. Why were we never allowed to turn the light on in the car when it was dark when we were younger? Honestly, I can see perfectly fine. And after I'd run out of life's biggest questions, it hit 6.30, so that was my cue to leave. Right, I'm in. My CV. The entrance to Radio 1. I guess it's time to now go home. I'm back home now, I've had my dinner. It is 10.30. The car has been there for four hours now. Now, when I left the car, the video was on 20 views. So any more views other than 20, I'm going to know it's people who have scanned the QR code. It's currently on 24 views. It's not the best return. I did get a tweet from an employee saying they'd seen it, who thought it was quite good, but I don't think they worked for Radio 1. So I'm just going to go to bed and hopefully more people have seen it. Right, it's the next morning. 7.30, so the car's been there for 13 hours. It's now on 42, so 22 people have seen it. No emails. It's still here, no tickets, that's good. You might be asking, why have I put the CV on top of the car? It's very simple, because this is why. That's the car, that's all the offices. So when they're looking down, having a look at the car, what do they see? Gubbins' CV over it. Perfect. Now, I will be honest with you guys, at this point, things weren't looking great. Um, the extent of the interaction was one guy who took a pic and then shook his head, um, and another who told me he worked for Newsnight, so he couldn't help me. Yeah, I went for Newsnight, sorry. I do. So, no, 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 <laughs> That's all right. No, it's not, all right. Not quite right for you. Almost. Close, but not... Thanks, mate. So, yeah, I was quite low. 
um, Greg's baguette in hand and metaphorical egg all over my face. This is showbiz, baby. But I wasn't going to give up. No, it's not what we do on the Max Fosh channel. I had two more plans. One of them was to text into the BBC Radio 1 number and tell them that the car was downstairs. And the other was to turn to social media. I really wanted this to work without using any of my so-called online clout. So I turned to Twitter. My Twitter isn't exactly a hub of activity. So I felt that if I tweeted out, anything that could happen from there was organic reaction. Frankly, I was out of options. And sometimes in life, you just got to get lucky. And then, suddenly, on this occasion, luck fell into my lap in the form of Nick Grimshaw, one of the biggest presenters at the station. Nick. Hello, mate. <laughs> this Hello, is, this is my, this is my work. Do you like it, Nick? Yeah, I love it. Thanks, mate. I think it's, um... Like, extreme invention. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Have a lovely day. With the approval of Mr. Grimshaw, everything just, you know, clicked into place. It's getting more and more traction. The tweet started going viral with the biggest names in the industry talking about it. Presenters, musicians were all calling on the BBC to have a chat with the floppy-haired posh bloke outside. This is going a little bit mental now. Like, the Twitter views just keep going... Scott Mills has just tweeted on it, saying, great hustle. Thank you, Sir Scott. Not wanting to overstay my welcome, I headed home, and shortly after I got back, I got contacted by the head of Radio 1, Alad Hayden-Jones. Right, right, very quickly. Um, I've just got home. I've just set up the lights and the cameras, because basically, um, I've just seen that the head of Radio 1, the numero uno, the biggest baby bell in the box, has just tweeted a video reply to the tweet that I put out about the car being outside Radio 1. I haven't watched it yet. This is basically the make or break to find out whether it has worked and whether they want to get a bit of Max in their lives. Right, let's react. Hi Max Fosh, I'm Aled Hayden-Jones, head of Radio 1. Wow. You see, I got your QR code and video. Boom, also second angle. Yeah, go on Aled. Thank you for your offer. It was great to see what you can do and to meet your out of work actor flatmate. On the radio front, I'm afraid Dan is still looking for jobs. But I've only just gone and offered 46 new presenters a slot on Radio 1 between Christmas and January. But I find disappointing. It's a disappointing start, but there is 12 seconds left in the video. I find your suggestion of presenting our online content interesting. So DM me and let's chat. P.S. You really should follow the socials of the station you want to work on. Yeah, that was, that is my bad. The next day we jumped on a 15 minute call. I had succeeded in what I'd set out to do, which was that just a little bit of graft can lead to amazing places. It's not about just doing some big stunt. You need to show why you're capable for the job. For inspiration, please go watch the Air Act episode on the Colin and Smear podcast. It will inspire the hell out of you. Alad and I are currently having conversations about yeah. ways I can work for Radio 1, so hopefully you'll be seeing me on the station in the near future. Cheers.